Jacob Schiff was a supporter of the Republican Party and because of that he had a lot of close relations with leading Republicans including people like President Taft and President Teddy Roosevelt. He was wealthy enough, powerful enough in American high finance that he could go see President Roosevelt if he wanted to talk to him. Um, one of the things that the United States was doing at the turn of the century was trying to develop uh, ties, business ties and trade ties with Asia, Japan and China and other places in Asia. And imperialism it's called in the history books. Schiff had another reason for doing business with Japan. Jacob Schiff hated the Tsar of Russia because the Tsar of Russia was very anti-Semitic and the Jews of Russia were very much persecuted. And Jacob Schiff wanted to do everything he could to undermine the Tsar. In 1904 and 1905 there was a war called the Russo-Japanese War. It was between Russia and Japan. And amazingly, Japan beat Russia. An interesting thing that cannot be understated is that one of the reasons why Japan beat Russia is because Jacob Schiff organized writing of bonds for Japan and got his business associates in the United States and in England and in other countries to underwrite these bonds so that the Imperial Japanese government could raise millions and millions of dollars to build the fleet to build the army that would defeat the Tsar. In fact, right after the war in 1906, Jacob Schiff went to Japan where the Emperor himself gave him the Order of the Rising Sun. You can't underestimate the importance of this one man to the victory of Japan. And he didn't do it because he loved Japan, he did it because he hated the Tsar. And the Tsar, the Tsar's government was very open in their hatred of Jacob Schiff because of this. There's an interesting side note. Many of you may not know this, but in World War II, thousands of Jews were saved from the death camps because they escaped to Japan or to Shanghai, China, which was under the Japanese rule during World War II. And there were thousands of Jews in Shanghai during the war who were not killed, who survived the war. And the question is, why did the Japanese not persecute the Jews? They were allies of Germany. And many people believe that it has something to do with their recognition of the favor that Jacob Schiff did for them in 1904 and 1905. Um, so maybe some Jews were actually saved from the Holocaust because of something that Jacob Schiff did 40 years before. Uh, we have a member, we have a person whose father was in that group. Mm -hmm. Now, Jewish leadership in the United States at the turn of the century, 1880 to 1920, was not like today where you have federations and you have organizations and you have a whole cadre of Jewish leadership and a lot of organizations. In that period it was much more simple, maybe I'll call it primitive. There were a few very, very rich Jews, mostly German, who were very wealthy, millionaires, and they sort of took care of it. They were the ones who, and they were called, I'll call them the stewards. They were the stewards of the American Jewish community. They believed in elitist rule that though, you know, we have a saying in Jewish, I'll say it in Yiddish and then I'll translate it. There was hustemeya hutdedeya. The one who has the money has the opinion. Mea means a hundred in, in Hebrew. Dea means opinion in Hebrew. The one who has the money, he makes the rules. Or as they say it in English, the golden rule is the one who has the gold makes the rules. And this really was the way it was in the 1880s, 1890s. Schiff and his group decided what was good for American Jews and they paid the bills. Um, now I'll give you an example of some of the things that he got involved in. 
He was, he was concerned about the poor Russian Jews who were coming in and living on the Lower East Side in poverty. And there were a few different things. Let's start with an old age home. Today, an old age home is different than it was a hundred years ago. First of all, people used to live in old age homes similar to what I would call North Oaks. Levendale today is, called, is different. It's for very sick people. But a hundred years ago, elderly people, there was no social security, there was no welfare. They lived and they could have lived for many, many years uh, in, in, a, in, a, in an old age home. He got involved in one called the Montefiore Home and Hospital, which was in New York. And when I say he got involved, Jacob Schiff wasn't just the chairman of the board. He went on a regular basis. He approved all the expenses. He decided how much each employee would get. And he was the dictator of the Montefiore Home. And he was the one who paid all the bills. He either gave the money himself or he raised it from his rich friends. He got money, for example, from from rich people that he did business with. Big money, like $10,000 from John D. Rockefeller. You have to understand, $10,000 at the turn of the century was a lot of money. Peanuts. Now it's peanuts to Rockefeller, but you could, I don't even know what the annual income of the average worker was in 1900, but I'm sure that a lot of people could live on $10,000 a year together in 1900. In any event, there was one check for $10,000 that he returned. He refused to cash it. A man by the name of Corbin, August Corbin, sent a check to the old age home. And it's probably because he wanted to do business with Schiff. Schiff refused to lend money to the Reading Railroad, which Corbin was the owner of, because number of years before that, Corbin had built a housing development in New York called Coney Island. And when he built Coney Island, he put a restrictive clause that Jews can't live in Coney Island. So Schiff got the check from Corbin. He put it back in an envelope and he says, I don't want your money. That's a lot of money. But in order that the home should not lose it, he gave $10,000 of his own money to cover it. Being, fighting anti-Semitism in 1900 is not like today. The law wasn't on our side then the way it was. But if you were as rich as Schiff, you could stand up to the Gentiles and say, you know, I'm a Jew and I'm proud of it. Um, one of the things that he liked about the old age home was they had a shul. And the shul was an Orthodox shul. Schiff loved to daven for the Ahmed, which means he liked to lead the services. So here was this fancy Jew with his top hat, a multimillionaire who was in, you know, fan, a member of Temple Emmanuel. But whenever he had Yortzeit, and many times when he didn't have Yortzeit, he showed up at the home and he led the services because that's how he learned to do it when he was a boy back in Frankfurt. That's what? That is how he learned to daven when he was a boy back in Germany. There's another Jewish cause that was very close to him, and that's called the Henry Street Settlement. Has anybody heard of the Henry Street Settlement? Yeah. Henry Street Settlement was started by a woman named Lillian Wald. Lillian Wald was a third generation American Jew from German, the rich German Jews, the assimilated Jews, who felt sorry for the poor Russian Jews on the Lower East Side. And she went down there because they did not have adequate nursing care, they didn't have vaccines, they didn't have healthy environment, they, they didn't have milk, they were just, they didn't have a playground, it was a terrible situation and Lillian Wald went down there and Lillian Wald was able to get Jacob Schiff to come down and when Jacob Schiff was sold on it, he basically took it over. Which means Lillian Wald ran it, she told, he told her what, what he would pay for. And he paid for it. 